It's the Score North Twin Show. Hey, can we even really hit the sounder anymore? I don't, I don't know if we can just. Hit I don't the think we. Burner. I don't. I don't think they deserve the burner. You know. You know what they deserve? To be exploded. Just explode them. Just, just explode them. There, good. I need to cut just the. All of the explosions have. Oh. On my yeah, button just, bar, anyways. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like a, a sounder of like, like ice clinking a glass, like as like another one, please. Like I'm, we're, just, we're just waiting here. Like we got nothing yeah. going on. Just can you refill me? Because I'm waiting. Keep, keep them coming until the twins do something. It's funny on MLB trade rumors. Now the athletic is down there. I know. I think Gleeman's down there for the athletic. And is Bobby Nightingale down there for the Star Tribune? I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Lavelle was. Maybe Lavelle was down there. So there are. There are like. You know, I feel bad for if you you go down there. So all right. Story time, real quick, and then we'll get into. There's drama at the winter meetings that that kind of rises above the Twins. The Twins are like in a queue right now of other teams waiting for yeah. Shohei Otani. Like once Otani goes, then teams are like, okay, well that half billion dollars in budget we had, we can now spend it elsewhere, and then there's a trickle down effect. But I used to cover the winter meetings for 1500 ESPN Radio. This is before Judd and I started doing a radio show together. Uh, I was doing a show with Patrick Royce and then covering the Twins beat for like three or four years. And so the winter meetings are always a great spot to – and we I think we had the Twins radio rights that entire time too. So you go down there, you get radio content. We I would do the show from the winter meetings location and then, you know – the, the twins would know that the Star Tribune, the Pioneer Press, 1500 ESPN, um, I think MLB.com, there was always like four of us that would travel for the winter meetings. Mm-hmm. And the twins would know, and other teams would do the same thing. Okay, we don't have to be like super accommodating to the media because it's not our job. Our job is to build our team out. But if these guys are going to come down and travel and spend money and cover the team, let's at least bring them into the suite, give them some information, you know. And so the Twins are doing that. Clearly, like, Falvey is having conversations. There's an update on Alex Kirilov's shoulder that we'll get to. But it is amazing how, like, all of these teams have traveling media. And as Ken Rosenthal pointed out, we are four days into the winter meetings, which is supposed to be the biggest week for player movement and free agent signings and trades. And the biggest names to change teams so far at the winter meetings are Alex Verdugo, Jared Kelnick, and Kirby Yates. Mm-hmm. Like, is there no obligation? And I, this is, I'm not like blaming the twins specifically. I'm just saying right. this is the center of the baseball media universe for a week. It's free agency time. Is there mm-hmm. not obligation for teams to do something and make the make the sport interesting? So the whole thing has become a lot like the uh, like the National Football League Combine now. That's what this is be- yeah. because it, it's access, but you're almost guaranteed nothing is going to occur. Which, by the way, if you're like a cocktail or two, this is the greatest thing in the history of the world. Oh, yeah. You're on a travel budget. <laughs> you know your team that you cover ain't going to be making moves. And so if you push it till 2.30 a.m. in Nashville at the honky tonk, guess what? You're not going to get right burned. There. Send you're me not- there. Did- I want to go You're there. You're not going to. Oh, Nashville. Great. Nashville is Dude. a very dangerous. It's, a, it's sneaky dangerous. Dangerous? Oh, dangerous as far as. Like, crime? As far as. Go, no, like, no, 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 no. As far dangerous. as going out crime. and staying out and having. Well, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying it's a very sneaky, dangerous place to go. Because you're going to have a great time. And if you know, hey, you know what? Odds of my team make, making a substantial move here are almost zero. I, you're you're going to be cutting it loose on uh, Broadway, man. Side That's street real quick. Time. I take issue with you assuming that Nashville is like, oh, it's a sneaky town to get hammered till 2 in the morning. I think people know exactly what they're doing when they go to Nashville. When you go to Vegas, when you go to New York, when you go to Nashville, you're staying out late and having a you good know what? time. I should clarify. It's sneaky, dangerous as far as as far as like sports uh, conventions go. Okay. Because like you think of like Florida or California, right? Warm weather. It's December. Like you don't want to. Your first choice is never to go to a place where it's also not like balmy. But anyway, yes, I digress. Nashville <laughs> is awesome. It's a ton of fun. And if you cover the Twins right now, I'd say there's a fifty fifty chance you're gonna set your alarm. Pecking order of Judd's top five most dangerous, as in good, cities. I need a Indianapolis, top five, Indi- top Indianapolis, five dangerous cities. 
Indianapolis is made for conventions. It is so sneaky good. It is made for conventions. Sneaky. It's got some. It's got some Dang. great bars. Indiana- I know it's the combine location, but it's is got some Indianapolis great, really your top five for sneaky cities. Oh, for sneaky, yeah, because like I'm not going to put New New York um, is obviously you know like number one for me, but it's not sneaky. I'm talking about like you go there and it's like Indianapolis. Why do I want to go there? And okay. then you go there in February. Uh, first of all. It might be the only city that exceeds us as far as I don't think you have to go outside ever between their underground tunnels. And and like it is it is you you can go from their equivalent of U.S. Bank Stadium to Target Center inside the entire time, which I think you can do here. But it's not I don't think it's I don't think it's late. Yeah, exactly right. It's it's a little more um, difficult. But, yeah, I'm going Indy, Nashville. Um, where else do I like to go to? Oh, Phil's old stomping ground. S- Seattle's fantastic. Oh. I think Seattle's a great town. Cause, cause like Seattle is not like, if I say Seattle and San Francisco, you're, you're like, of course I want to go to San Fran. Right. I think Seattle's a very, very, it, it's a great town. I think there's and, a lot of people now that are very, very yeah. like since the pandemic and stuff that like San Francisco is not quite the same. Uh, we heard that about Seattle. Seattle is beautiful. And yeah, yeah. there's like homelessness and stuff, but it the is restaurants a, though. This right here, by the way, the first seven minutes of the Scorn Our Twin Show tells you just how broken baseball's yeah. current offseason model is. And that we should be sitting here on a Wednesday, the heart of the winter meetings, talking about the five different pitchers that the twins have made contact with, the big splash signings that have been unveiled. Usually they have player press conferences. At the winter meetings, didn't Albert Pujols sign during the winter meetings like ten years ago yeah. too, if I'm not mistaken? But this has been not, this has been more of an ongoing trend now for what the last five well, they to had eight t- years. Two years ago, they had the lockout. Well, right, but pending, that and that created things. a kind of a fake deadline. But, but don't forget, Bryce Harper didn't sign until spring training. Yep. No, it's in fact. Let's read. We should get into. I, I want to read you guys just a clip of Ken Rosenthal and Buster Olney. Two of the four, I would say, Mount Rushmore of baseball insiders. Jeff Passan has to be on there. We could debate who the fourth one is. Maybe it's John Heyman. I don't know. But these guys must have gotten together at the Nashville. Where are they staying? The uh, the the Opryland Hotel, I think, is where all this is happening. Okay. Which is just an, in, an insane structure. And um, they must have gotten together last night and said, okay, hey, I know we're competition here. You're the athletic I'm ESPN. Have you been able to get a hold of Shohei's people? Has his agent got back to you? No? God, I thought so. Screw that guy. And screw baseball. And so they both wrote similar pieces last night, this morning on their on their websites. Ken Rosenthal writes, Earth to baseball. The winter meetings are supposed to be fun. At their best, the meetings are a combination of a spending orgy and a swap meet. The 2023 Shohei delay edition, however is a colossal bore, a detriment to a sport that should be generating worldwide attention with shock and awe signing of the game's biggest superstar. Instead, virtually the entire industry is on hold waiting for the sphinx-like Otani to choose his next team and be still my beating heart, perhaps even offer public comments for the first time in months. He basically pieced out of the Angels clubhouse in like early September went back to Japan and has not spoken publicly since. The fault goes beyond Otani and his agent, whose devotion to secrecy extends from refusing to divulge the type of elbow surgery Otani underwent to refusing to also provide the name of his dog. That is a true story, which we'll get to. The bigger problem is the nature of baseball's offseason, which lacks deadlines and by extension urgency. Players, agents, and teams procrastinate to their heart's delight even if it means sucking the air out of the massive Gaylord Opryland Hotel at a time when hundreds of media members are gathered to generate publicity for baseball. Otani and his agent are under no obligation to complete a deal this week and trigger a cascade of signings, but you know what? They should be obligated to do it. The biggest names to change teams at the meeting so far are, as we mentioned, Alex Verdugo, Jared Kelnick, and Kirby Yates. Dude, I agree. I give him a standing O for this. Okay. I love this. We've been talking about this for like eight to 10 years. So I agree. But I think the way 
And I, I did not read Buster's piece. I did read Rosenthal's piece. I will say this. I don't necessarily like how he angled it though because it comes off and i'm gu guilty i have d done this before myself back in the days when i was the if you recall lead beat writer for the vikings beat at the star tribune um it's angled a little bit towards woe is me why are they not calling me back yeah like 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 here's what i want this is if i was to paint this picture and not be pissed off and look, I've been pissed off too. Okay, like this is personal now, um, and and so he ordinary, you, you know, the Busters and the Rosenthal's are used to calls coming back. The other thing is, it's interesting that Passon, who is considered the lead, he is now the lead baseball news br breaker, is not going to get involved because he still thinks he might get that phone call. Mm -hmm. But anyway, here's what I would have liked to have seen this painted as, because I think this this would have been more from a business aspect, a correct. Uh, portray um, portraying of the situation. What I would like to see is you have MLB has a network. Okay. They're spending, and it's great. They're spending all week in Nashville at a desk in that hotel. And they are literally talking about nothing. They, they are, there was a crawl yesterday when we got done, I went and watched it for I like two it, hours. Remember. There was a crawl that said baseball rumors from winter meetings now i'm fine with that that's awesome it's speculation um but it's but it had to be quantified as rumors because there is no news there, there yeah. is no news and think about this the nfl has a network on the first day of free agency that network is wall-to-wall -wall news guys right. are signing there is speculation as well free agency it's, frenzy it's one of the best bonanza days. is it not one of the best days of the year is it Dude, not one amazing. of the best days of the year? So it's this like is what... it's like the time hits or whatever it is. Like okay, it's noon on free agency frenzy Monday, and like fifty two players agree to contract structures, right? And and I think they're mad at, at Otani because one he is being secretive, which I don't think happens as much in baseball. But anyway, they're mad at Otani because in their opinion, right or wrong, and they might be right, he's gumming up all of the works. Like once he gets done, the dominoes fall. And their point is he's you know, he's jamming the drain right now and nothing else goes through. But all of that being said, this has been a building festering problem, Phil. That, that seriously, because we love we love the start of an NFL free agency. The NBA does a great job. The yeah. NHL, our sport. Declan and I, which is, you know, not, not on a par, in my opinion, with football or basketball, they do a great job. This has been a festering problem, and I'm hoping that that this will be the tipping point of both sides, because it obviously is going to heavily involve the Player Association, coming together, though, to spur action. And if that means the winter, I don't care if you do, do the old 1978, yeah, boys, we're going down to the, we're going to, you know, Nashville to meet. I don't care how you do this, but you need something to spur action. I, I don't care if it's on Zooms. I don't care if it's on rotary phones. I don't care how it's done, but this is an issue when your network is sitting there literally saying, what have you heard? Well, I don't know. Dude, what have you heard? Th there's a few obvious solutions here that, that that we've sort of proposed on this show over the years that we can bring up and that Ken Rosenthal proposed in this article. But just quick, the Buster only article, it's just as incredulous. And I'm fine with it. Like, I think it, I think someone needs to poke at this entity. And whether it was the right tone or the right way to do it, you know, it did feel a little bit like woe is me from these guys. But I love that they're doing this. Buster only says, Otani's decision is being handled like delicate negotiations over a secret spy swap. There's silence and threats with club executives rolling their eyes as they describe the warnings they've been given from Otani's camp about publicly discussing their efforts to sign the most dynamic and popular talent on earth. Quote from one general manager, sorry, I can't talk about the guy everyone's talking about as he laughs. So Otani's, this is why, this is why it was such a big deal. Dave Roberts went on MLB Network because they're filling time, right? Oh, come right. on. Rocco Baldelli was on the other day. And they're just, yep. you know, it's just Dave Roberts and Apollo, whatever. Let's talk some baseball. And he mentioned that, yeah, we just we just had a three-hour meeting with Shohei the other day. And it was like, oh, he's not supposed to say that. Yep. There's all the this reaction. Like, oh, did you, did you just, did you ruin the chances? Like, right. And as these guys are pointing out, and Buster went into, like, great detail, he's saying, 
why can't Shohei like other big free agents? Why can't he? Why can't it be known that he met with this team this day, this team that day? He toured their facility. Right. Like, 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 why can't it be a public spectacle? I get that, like, keeping some level of privacy and secrecy with the negotiations is a good thing for Shohei and his agent. Right. But it is, it is weird. Like, he disappeared for four months, and now it's like, if you say anything publicly, yes, we are gonna cut your arm off. Like, <laughs> that, that is that is very weird. But what we need. And what we've discussed for a long time to get at is a hammer here that gives him a deadline. So, Correct. so like, yes. so like, if he wants to go out and tell you chapter and verse, hey, I'm talking to the Phillies and I'm talking to the Red Sox, I'm talking to the Blue Jays. Great. If he wants to shut up, okay, a little bit more frustrating. His right. But what we need is baseball to come down with a hammer and say, we really don't care what information you leak and provide. What we care about is we're giving you a date that this has to be done by, and that's what we need. Okay, I want to give you guys four potential solutions to if, if we all agree here that it would be great for baseball to have a week of frenzied free agent and trade mm -hmm. movement like you see in the NBA. In some ways, the NFL and the NBA, especially mm -hmm. the NBA and maybe even the NHL for diehard fans, that week or two of player movement is among the most popular and marketable things that they do on a 365 day calendar. Right. You've got like, OK, the NBA finals are pretty high up there. And then after the NBA Finals, maybe the NBA Draft, but probably the week of player movement is the is the most fun thing that they do in a 12-month calendar, right? It's my Christmas, personally, now. Mm -hmm. It's so, so it's a blast. And it's and it's what it creates storylines and drama. Well, and, and everyone's involved. Yep. And fans. Like the Super Bowl is two teams, right? So, you know, okay, game's great, whatever. The day that they launch, that the free agency frenzy starts with uh, with our guys Rappaport and Pelicero and, and Garofalo, uh, the day that starts, you guys, is the greatest. Everyone's involved if they want to be. And if you're a fan and you're busy and you have kids and a life and a job and you're, you're not like us or we're just on a microphone every day obsessing over this stuff, it's great to just be able to dial in as a fan for a week, week and a half. Okay, all right, here we go. I know that my team's going to add players, subtract players. I can, I, and I know that I can engage for a week and then go back to my life or engage for a day or whatever it is. With baseball, it's just this, okay, free agency opens up on like a nebulous day, five days after the World Series, but nothing happens. And then like there's the winter meetings where sometimes things happen, and then, but then sometimes it's like nothing happens till February. It's just this four-month droning process, right? So the biggest reason why this happens is because these other leagues have salary cap structures. Teams know exactly... Like in the NBA, a max contract is a max contract. Now there's varying degrees of there's like a super max. If you've been if you already got your max, there's a super max. But you know when free agency hits, you know how much cap space you have or don't, and then you know how much money Kevin Durant is going to cost over how many years. There's really no negotiation, right? The only negotiation is for like less than max players. And in the NFL, there's a little bit more of a negotiation because you can get more creative with contracts. But teams have a certain, hey, guys, we got $50 million in cap space. Right. That team has 40. And, and this player, what? based on history, is probably going to make 25. So let's get a deal done. What makes it fun in those sports isn't necessarily the contracts themselves. It's, it's basically a beauty pageant with the free agent picking a team. That's what makes it fun. Yep. It's like, like who do you want to play for? And going into it, you already know for the most part within like, you know, within a couple uh, notches of standard deviation, like this is probably what the contract's going to be. In baseball, there's no structure. There's no salary cap. There's no max contracts. There's no there's none of that stuff. So Shohei's agent and these five teams just stare at each other for like four months. Nah, you guys are offering nine years. We want 13. This is what happened with Bryce Harper. Teams are like, oh, for, we'll for sure do like eight or ten years. He's like, we want we want a fifteen year contract. Uh, okay, well right. we're not gonna go fifteen. We're gonna we'll go ten. Mm, we want fourteen, and then it, it takes forever, right? So, all right, Ken Rosenthal proposes. Here's one solution: a trade deadline at the conclusion of the winter meeting. So call it like December. Let's just say December tenth. That if you're gonna complete a trade, it has to be done by December tenth or you can't make a trade until pitchers and catchers report. That would at Love least it. create like a trade. Okay, if you're if you're the Twins and you don't have it's enough money for free agent, we can't sign, you know, Snell or whoever in free agency. We have to make a trade. It has to be done by December 10th or we can't make a trade until spring training. And I love that 
because because what is the one thing that especially football does? They basically shut down for a month, July. Right? Mm -hmm. So like I would be I would far prefer, hey, there will be no baseball transactions from you know December 10th through February. I don't know. Pick pick your day. But then spring training starts. So yes, like spurring action right now, that's a great idea. Love it. Here's one more from Ken Rosenthal. A December 15th deadline for all transactions with business resuming February 1st. So if you're going to sign as a free agent or if you're going to make a trade, it has to be by December. So you have basically between November, let's call it 10th and December 15th, a one month window. And if you don't get your trade or if you're if you're a player, you don't sign a contract, then you got to sit on your ass for like the next two or three months and not know what your future is going to hold until close to now, there's going to be guys that that say, hey, that's not the right. deal I wanted. Let's talk again on February 1st, but that's another way. Yeah, I like that a lot. I would I would extend it for just like the month of December. I would just I would just keep it in the whole month of December if you want to sign a contract by if like you want to put the trade deadline thing in on the 15th, 10th, fine. But if you want to sign a contract, you have until the month of December. You have the whole month, you have Christmas, you have the whole thing to figure it out. Hmm. Uh, Cause I think like creating like an almost eight week span where there's nothing and you have like good players still like looking for teams and they can't do anything about it because their agent kind of screwed them over i think is a little a little shady on that part but i i like the premise of what this is trying to do it's trying reason, to create movement I, I think the reason december 15th is because baseball front offices generally shut down for the last two weeks of december for christmas like they're not working on christmas so baseball front office is shut down anyways which is why they're saying december 15th instead of like december 25th but i would even take it a step further and say December 15th or whatever date, December 20th. I think the like the more narrow you can make the range, the more you're going to create action. Yeah. So it, the problem is if you give teams through December, well, now it's like, okay, now there's two months of nebulous activity. Yeah. I'd make it, hell, I'd make it December 1st. Let's get some stuff done in November or, or pick your window of time. Pick like a two-week window of time or three-week window. But I would do this. I would say there's a deadline for multi-year contracts that doesn't reopen. So let's let's say let's say we have a December 15th deadline for all transactions resuming on Dece on on February 1st. And if you don't agree to a multi-year contract by December 15th, you don't get to negotiate a multi-year contract on February 1st. You can only sign one-year deals. Then so the then guys will sign multi-year well, yeah. contracts before December 15th. Yeah, so it, it sounds like uh because of the action that occurred uh because of the the um offseason lockout that baseball did recommend according to the Rosenthal piece, some potential changes player association met and declined it. And like, like that type of, if they, if you go to the players association and players say, are idiots, dude, multi-year contracts and they'll say no way. But I think you've got, I think that there's a solid case to be made that shutting that picking a date and saying after that, until essentially Feb 1 or, you know, Feb 10, you can't mm -hmm. sign. I think that works, and here's why. Otani and the guys like that at Harper possibly would say, well, screw it then. I'll sign then. I don't care. But what do you want to do? Because And I've see, seen this in, in football. What you want to do is you want the next level of players and agents to have urgency no matter what Otani does. Otani and Harper in the big picture do not matter. No one's going to get paid like them. Like, like you are literally putting your life on hold for no reason other than the fact that you're like, well, this is how it should work. But when we're talking about, you know, generational talents, they're going to get contracts that are that you're not, you know, I don't care who else you are on the market. You ain't sniffing that. Right. The other thing that Donnie, Bar does, Donnie Barrels is waiting for uh, Shohei to sign yeah. just to <laughs> see but here's what that the market is for right handed yeah, hitting. But, but the, like, think about it. It's ridiculous. But here's the most important thing. And this is what ha what I've seen happen to football. You want the player's family, and particularly if they're married, their wife, to kick the player in the ass and say, "We need you to have a contract by like, the deadline." A, yes, by the deadline, right? But but I'm saying if you had this if you had this deadline, and Otani's like, "Well, I don't care about it. You know, I'll sign on March 1st if I want to." Mm -hmm. Families are still are then going to say, "Hey, Jethro." Get off your ass and sign a contract. We need to know where we're going to live. We need to know what the income is. 
This is and why you he, do the multi-year contract deadline too. This is why. This is why. Well, a combination, I like it, but I don't think it gets passed. Okay, but here's the thing. This is why players are idiots. Okay, and I love I love baseball. I love baseball players, but you guys, seriously, players association, everything that you have balked at, pun intended, a little baseball reference there, balk. Everything, everything you've balked at. Oh, the pitch clock. That's no, yeah. we're not going to do that. Oh, the. Uh, you know, the whatever, like everything they've done for pace of play and the shift, you can't take away the shift. All of it has made baseball better. Mm-hmm. All of it. And you guys dragged your feet for years and years on this stuff. Attendance was up. Games were shorter and more digestible. And so for this, because I've, you know, I tweeted this out last night, the, you know, sort of the December 15th deadline, multi-year contract deadline. The players will never go for that was some of the responses. Why? I know that you're focused on, well, I want to be able to leverage a negotiation for as long as it takes to get what I want. Okay, but zoom out from like the bridge of your nose to something wider here for the game. What if I told you you could create a week and a half or a two-week sprint that was fascinating for fans, for media, it was generating ratings, it was making your sport more visible. The entire water level would rise for your sport. More of you would become household names because as a fan, oh, I, okay, if I lock it, think about how many left guards become household names in football free agency frenzy because everyone's paying attention for a week and a half. You think that like if football free agency was a three month dragged out process that you would oh, know, yeah. you would know who like Joe some Tooney of these, is. yeah, Joe Tooney, exactly, <laughs> dude. Like it's ridiculous how short sighted these players are on some of this stuff. But I'm I'm also I'm frustrated because guys like Rosenthal and Buster are like their breaking point is Shohei Otani. The breaking point should be every year when things don't happen. Like like o- Otani's a special yeah. case. He is a very special case. And no matter what, where baseball has I I think now where the sport of baseball is incredibly incentivized to fix this or to change it. It it it's not a fix. It's a change. It's a change. You know what? The winter meetings are a relic. That is the same as, and I loved it, the pitcher hitting in the National League. Like this whole idea of we have to gather. You don't have to gather anymore. Like, you know, it's we're going out to dinner as a group. We're going to meet with people in our suite. Uh, last time I checked, there was something called a pandemic, and there was something called Zoom. Okay, but the uh, con- the, con- the NFL Combine, is it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I agree, mm-hmm. but what I'm saying is baseball needs to change its thinking. And if they change their thinking on how this is done – because when you have a network now that you own, that by the way is going to get more, I, you know, the, a free agent frenzy is going to get them eyeballs. Do you think what they're programming now? Do you think I want to look at Joel Sherman and John Heyman saying nothing because they don't yeah. know a damn thing? So you know, this you is know what where this needs to take a step. You know what it could be like, because in the NFL, the combine is in early February, right? Like early or mid mid late February. It's in late February. Early March, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. The, the yeah. combine is two weeks before the free agency window opens up, usually around that time. So you've got your in, and I'm all I disagree with you on that. I think I think getting everyone together and like having in person connections and stuff like that's what builds relationships with the agents and GMs. That's what gets like you know a couple cocktails and someone and they start talking contract before they're supposed to. Like it it starts the action, and then you got two weeks to sort of settle in and think about the things you talked about the combine. And then there's a sprint right out of the gate for free agents. Could baseball mm-hmm. do their winter? So baseball would have no transactions for 30 days after the World Series. Mm-hmm. Winter meetings are December 1st through the 5th. And then from December 5th through the 20th, it's a two-week winter hot stove I love it. for yes. Bonanza. And yeah. if you don't sign by December 20th, that's fine. But no action then from December 20th until February 1st. Yes. And for me, no multi-year contract. You either sign a multi-year contract, and now people say, well, what if the teams collude? And Dude, they're not going to collude. Teams want good players, so they're going to offer multi-year contracts to these players. So that's that to me, that's like, I don't, you don't need a salary cap to generate action like this. No, but that's my, so my, my point about the status quo right now is this notion that teams are going to show up in Nashville and just all of a sudden start signing guys is, is silly now. My point is, I, I love your idea. I'm not saying people don't have to gather. I'm saying this notion that they're all going to gather and all of these deals are going to get done. That's not how baseball works now. Yeah. So, like, let's find a way to let's find a way to facilitate the most action possible. And that idea of a meetings held where there's almost just 
rampant tampering, which I absolutely love, which is what football does. That's exactly what I would want. Yeah. By the way, we do have an Alex Kirloff injury update. So we do we do have a twins oh, topic to discuss here uh, from The Athletic. Alex Kirloff has yet to resume hitting following late October surgery to remove a bursa sack from his right shoulder. But the twins were encouraged he didn't need a more substantial operation after being taken off the playoff <laughs> roster. Quote from Falvey. We feel fortunate that it wasn't a labrum issue. We don't have any reason to believe this is a long-term issue now based on what was fixed there. His wrist was in great shape last year. Shoulders should be in a good spot going into spring training. So there you go. I just want Falvey to once say, hey, guys and gals, we are really discouraged. Yeah. Byron Buxton came in, and it doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good. I'm not a doctor, but I saw a slight limp. You know, <laughs> Or you know what? Kirloff never going to stay healthy and that's on the record i'm very you know just once i want him to just to say i I, we're screwed here guys yeah i don't mean to be an alarmist but oh my god it's it's a huge problem um (laughs) i have a random twin of the week for you guys here presented by our friends at zero res so is your home really ready for those holiday gatherings do you have sort sort of a funky smell uh coming from your carpets just you know, you don't want to be embarrassed or insecure about your home when your family and friends are coming over for the holidays. And don't DIY clean. Get zero res because they'll get the job done in a safe and effective way. 17,000 reviews on Google and zero res has a 4.9 out of 5 rating, which is incredible. Call zero res today for the score north special. Get three rooms zero resified starting at $129. And this month, get $75 off when you get your air ducts cleaned. 9520 res. Or ZeroResMinnesota.com. Say you want the Score North special. Spell it forward or backward. It spells the same. Zero Res. Okay, boys. Judd and Declan are going to clash in a battle of twins historical wits here. Uh, last week, Judd correctly guessed Emilio Pagan as the random twin of the week. You were Before very that, offended by that. Yeah. You know, well, I, I wasn't, aff- I wasn't was offended a- by it. I was just, yeah. I just got beat. There was a threat yeah. made. Post- yeah. A post threat? loss, you you said wait till next week. Yeah. So and like I'm expecting. Are. So like I am expecting yeah. a Johan changeup. Okay. Oh, maybe this player was a teammate of Johan's. Maybe, maybe he wasn't. Was Johan. Perhaps it's a Washington maybe senator. Johan, Could be this Johan. Player went by the name nickname <laughs> Big Train. <laughs> it was more like a semi truck. Uh, <laughs> Anyhow, the last few random twins, Emilio Pagan, Matthew Lecroy, Drew Butera, Dave Winfield, and Craig Breslow. All time, I have an eight. I have eight points. Judd has seven points, and Declan has five points. I'll throw out a series of clues. You guys get up to three strikes. If you hit the third strike, you are out, and the other person wins. All right. And just shout out guesses however you want to here. Okay? Here we go. This random twin played in 497 games with the twins. Regular regular season. Okay. From what I can tell, this random twin does not have a social media presence. I did a fairly extensive search. Could not find a social media presence from this I random trust you. twin. Okay. Private. This man's very private. Could mean that. Could could mean other things. This random twin once hit a home run in a World Series game. Ooh, that it's got the wheels turning for you guys. It's got substance to it. Let's just say that. Okay. Mm-hmm. That clue is substance. This random twin was once Baseball America's Minor League Player of the Year. Very good minor league player. I had a, I had a guess, but now it's out. Have, have we used this guy? I've got a guess as well. I'm trying to decide if I should fired away or not this is very oh boy so he was baseball america's minor league player of the year Mm -hmm. and continued that momentum over into his rookie season where he finished second in the year yes yes oh nice very nice coming in hot I, i was waiting for the umpire clue 
Oh, so you you were on Delman too? No, I'm kidding. Oh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> he did get suspended 50 games for throwing yeah. a bat at an umpire. One Good time. job, Dex. Yeah. Good job. That was there it is, very Declan clean with win. Another win here. The other clues were going nice. to be he played 1,118 major league games before turning 30 years old, and zero games played in the major leagues after turning 30 years old, and once hit 400 in the Australian Pro Baseball League. Really. He also led Major League Baseball in these categories during various seasons. Ground into double plays, out, total out made in a year, like as a hitter, and errors committed in left field. So there it is, Delman Young, man. He, he was once carted off the field in Milwaukee and like had like a bruised toe or something. Do you remember that? Yeah, it, was, it looked really ALCS bad. ALCS yeah. MVP, too. Yep. Good yes, postseason hitter. Really good postseason hitter. He had like yeah. a 500 uh, postseason slugging yeah, percentage. Yeah, he, he was a really good postseason hitter. Tigers, yep. right? Uh, yes. He, he His postseason heroics mostly came with the Tigers. So there we go. All right, random twin of the week. Good job, Dex. So complaining about Major League Baseball's offseason. And then Alex well, Kirloff's to to shoulder update. I'm not know. complaining. We're, we're trying to fix it here. I'm not. This is not. This is for Jump you. Jump to we're, conclusions. We're doing this for you out there, Dude. Fans. It's so obvious what they need to do. Anyways, all right, we got write that down predictions coming up on uh, Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd and Purple Daily today, and we'll see you guys later this week on the Score North Twin Show.